Okay, it's time for one more thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. It's kind of like our podcast. Hey, what are we? What are we starting with? Some I don't know. If this is breaking news. It might be breaking news to some. But I was talking to Coach Rick Zapata over at St. Paul today, and I was asking him about Q Allen because earlier in the year when they played Los Altos, he was on the sidelines, and they said he was about a you know, week away. We hope to have him back in the league. Yeah. Well, here we are, James Aaron. Three weeks left. He hasn't played since that that first game of the year. And I was asking Coach Cepeda what's going on, and he says they had originally misdiagnosed him, that he has That's a, a, that the he doctor a, a broken bone in his ankle. They had to re-put it back in the cast. But that he's come a long way. They think he might be ready by next week, possibly week 10, if they get in the playoffs. They're hoping to have him there. But that's the story. And the other part of the story is, you know, even without Allen, they still been able to average game about 270 yards on yeah. the ground. Their running game hasn't really missed a beat. They are 6-1. and one. They're ranked number three in Division five, right. And they've got a big game at Harvard Westlake, that, in the Delray League. They're 2-0. and oh, St. Paul is 1-0. Oh. This is really their league championship right. game on Friday. And I think you've got to give that, that team a lot of credit. Because I think we all thought, you know, when Allen went down, he was their horse. He was as important to them as Moore was to Bishop Amat. Maybe even more. And they've still been able to win a lot of games. Yeah, yeah. Heck of a job there by Zepeda. Um, and, you know, that league that we all thought, you know, St. Paul would just trample through. It, it is interesting to this point. We'll see what, you know, they can do against Harvard-Westlake. Um, but uh, one more thing. Speaking of Bishop Amat, Freddie, uh, I know that you've had some sleepless nights recently, um, and there's been, been talk, I guess James was retweeting Cal High Sports, you know, talking, and I saw that um, they had mentioned that, you know, the San Gabriel Valley Tribune. I saw that. I saw that. Did you see that? It's guns of South Hills going to one. They're... Why haven't we reached the point yet where Bishop Amat's resume is good enough for it to jump South Hills? Is it, is it just the old AP thing where, like, you know, you don't drop until you lose? Yeah. Well, you know, I look at South Hills. They, they haven't, you know, they still have a defense, Aram, that in six of their seven wins has given up seven points or less. I think their, their schedule is pretty good. I think, you know, that win over San Juan Hills, when you, when you go back and look, that was a great win. But I, I, I do see the flip side of that coin when you see what Bishop Amat has been doing now. The win over Chaminade, the win this week. I think I'm going to look at it. This week are two of the big, big, biggest games for the yeah. league title. Yep. Because you've got one more thing. South Hills at home against Diamond Ranch. Yeah. These are two 2-0 and o teams. This is the game for the league title. Diamond Ranch has already done the hard work beating Los Altos and beating Charter Oak. This is their big game. They beat Chino Hills earlier in the season. You know, Bishop Mott is going on the road at Notre Dame, yeah. a team that's won five straight. And they're not There's, giving up any points. Yeah, they're they're 2-0 and in the mission. So I'm looking at these two games this week. And when we talk about how you how you fare in your corner of the world, you're yeah. never, these are the true games for both of them. Um, if, if Bishop Mott is more impressive than South Hills this week, um, i probably put Bishop Mott back on top. I'm, I'm going to give it this week. Maybe just a win over Notre Dame is good enough. I don't know. But I do want to see what South Hills does. It may be their, 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 their biggest game in a long time because it's, it's been a while. They've had some easy games. They got to open with West Walnut, Covina West and Walnut. Um, they haven't really had a tough game since that San Juan Hills game. Uh, they beat Miracosta 50-20 to in a game that was really – Miracosta scored two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it's to, yeah. so – I think this is the big one. So but one more thing, does Diamond Ranch have any uh, shot to beat them? or uh, you know? I, I don't think so, but I think <clears throat> Diamond Ranch would tell you they do. I, I just think I think we're going to find out. I, I really think South Hills is going to put one over on them. That's why I have them number one. That's why I think they're that good. Or for games like this, when they have a chance to show out, they're going to show out. And I think, you know, West Covina last week, it was only 14 nothing at half. And I think part of that was just the overconfidence. They really, and there were some turnovers. They really, in the second half, uh, dialed in and, and finished them off. Yeah, but Diamond Ranch was trailing by a baseball score deep into their game against yeah. CO before yeah. Yeah. Um, you had a little bit of a cascading event that right. cost CO. Right. I guess those are those big plays yeah. that Lou Ferrar talks about that went against CO, like a, a trick play for a touchdown to give Diamond Ranch the lead, ensuing Charter Oak possession, pick six for yeah. Diamond Ranch. Now the game's out of reach. Yeah. And you know it just snowballed. So yeah. um, that's good. I just think I just think these are the next I think, three weeks for for South Hills, yeah. and I think they're going to show us in the next three weeks 
why I have them number one. Why? I don't think they're going to be close games. I think they're going to route all three of them. Okay. We'll find out. Well, one more thing. That's when, why we're playing these games. When you mention South Hills, you can't help but mention Northview. And this is my question mm. to you guys this now. A great win. Who has the better chance to win a CIF title this year, Northview or South Hills? That's 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 a great question because wow. I, I you know they're Ooh. they're both number one right in their division right no, now. No, Northview is not number one. No, they're number they were, three or four, but they're not number one. You know, I haven't I haven't looked. At, to be honest, at those divisions mm -hmm. close enough yet, you know, we're still a few weeks away from the playoffs to know, you know, what these, what they're capable of against those other teams. But I'll tell you what, Northview is another one. One more thing that, you know, you argue South Hills has had this great year. I mean, Northview has equally done that. I, I don't think they've had a chance to show it against the type of teams that South Hills has. Doesn't mean that they can't. I think the win over San Marino might have been one of those games. Oof. When you look at what San Marino is yeah. doing. Yeah, look at what San Marino is doing. But I think for Northview, now. they get their rival this week. This Covina. is a Covina week. Covina got put, gave up 60-some points against San Dimas. There is no way Northview's not going to go into that game and score 40, 50, or 60 points too. Their offense is too good. Covina's offense is too bad. That's going to be a blowout, and we're going to go into that week 10 where it's going to be Northview and San Jeez. Dimas for the league title. That is San Dimas. Yeah, yeah um, that's, that's an interesting way to put it. You know, the other team is... Uh, you know, we're talking about likely CIF champs and who's got the best shot. I guess it's got to be Bonita. Yeah, they're number I mean, one right now in 10. Yeah, I think undefeated, Bonita, I, I tell you what, league. Someone brought this to my attention, and I did look it up. Bonita's number one in their division, but they're probably, out of those three teams, have the least chance of winning a championship. What? Yeah. Really? I thought they'd have There's the a best. team, Highland, that's in their division. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're that's pretty good. spectacular. Okay. That yeah. has won some games that are kind of mind-boggling. I'm, I'm surprised that Highland's not number number one. And just from that cursory look wow. at that team, and you, if you if you had look at some of the teams they've beaten, uh, you just see Covina. I mean, Bonita undefeated. Yeah. You know, um, and some of the teams they've beaten that are yeah. going to go on and win the league titles, maybe like yeah. Arroyo. And they have another. And every game is a big. They still got to play. I they still got to play Glendora. Glendora, Glendora the last the last game of the year on a Thursday. Yeah. That that game's just sick. So, Chi High against Bo High. Yeah, at Citrus league for the league title. I, you know, one more thing. I'm blown away that Ayala's 0-2 in the league. I mean, they went in the league. Um, it, it's kind of like Chaminade on the other side of town. Yeah. Went in the league as the league favorite. Now they're 0-2. Yeah, yeah. well, that's, that's the, unbelievable. We said that at the beginning of the year. These these teams are going to be that tough. They've had to play Colony and Glendora right off the bat. Yeah. And you talk about Glendora, one more thing. They had to sweat out a victory over Claremont. Yeah. The, one, the one game that you look at and you say, it was a trap game. this is their blowout game. Because <laughs> no, all the trap. other games are going to be tough. You know, yeah. uh, and, and they have to sweat that out. So I don't know how this is, is going to fit. You know, Bonita and Ayala, I don't know how that's going to turn out this week. You know, yeah. Ayala, can they start 0 3 in league? I mean, that's after start being sure. 0 3 going in, that's just unbelievable. Sure, yeah. Um, um. Uh, you know, I don't know what what other one more yeah. things you guys have. Other well, you got St. Francis there. I was there. just going to say there's you got one Francis. more thing looming out there with St. Francis. Yeah, you know, and <laughs> you know, I wouldn't put a whole lot into that loss against Paraclete because Paraclete's pretty darn good. Yeah, I mean, they that, had played a really nice schedule. Yeah, you know, and and one, the one thing about Dean Harrington is once he finds out your weakness. It becomes a long night, man. Well, St. Francis is it's not they, hard to find they, out. They, 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 they get routed by Notre Dame. Yeah, but they didn't have a few athletes that they do now. I was looking at that game, and I was saying, man. Remember, I think Perry got yeah, three or four players off of that SOP that's, list that were transferring. That, 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 that makes that, a huge thing. Right. And remember, Perry Clee beat St. Yeah. Paul, too, and I was talking yeah. to Zapata last night. But, but I, you know, I think I said last week in the one more thing or two-minute video, what concerns me about St. Francis is the, is the points they allow. Yeah, and, Yeah, and, and, and when you start to go into their league and you start to get in their playoff division and you're playing these great offenses – you're not going to win that way. Their league comes down to them and Cathedral. Next week. It's just as simple as that. But, yeah, as far as Division Three, I think that's really looking like a long shot now for St. Francis, even if they make it. Yeah. I mean, because they just they can't stop it. What? Now we what? go to the other side of that table over there. What are we doing with La Mirada? La Mirada, yeah. Well, they're heading into their very important games now um, in the Suburban League, and it's their chance to – now, James – Pay attention. This is the tr this is the real definition of circling the wagons when you're 0 and okay. seven. Okay. <laughs> All right. 0 and seven. And yeah. You're desperate and, yeah. and and things are swooning. Yeah. Um, this is when you got to circle the wagons. Okay. And La Mirada's got that chance against Bellflower, and if, and that if they can win that game, it sets up for yeah. Mayfair. I don't think Mayfair is getting beat in, in that league this year. I mean, Mayfair is the team that took St. This Francis is the, this to is the, the reverse. Wire. Psychology part of <laughs> playing the, the the schedule you should oh. play because you get in the league and you know hey, yeah. we played those teams we're not going to see you know La Habra and La Mirada 
do that to a T. These are two teams that schedule ridiculously, yeah. and then they get. But the La Habra bounces back. I know that La Habra has shown the last several years that they bounce back. Another good example to bring them up again is Chaminade over on the west side of town. They played Oaks Christian. Uh, Folsom from up north, mm -hmm. that's the team. We'll, we'll, that might be our one last thing of the day. Um, we'll get back to that. And St. John Bosco. And I asked Chaminade's coach, Ed Croson, last week, you know, then they lost to Bishop Amat to start league in a close game, and then they lost again last week to Alamany. I asked him last week, Coach, is it worth it to play up, you know, against this competition? Do you cost your team, yeah. you know, you may not have anything left in the tank? And he thought, no, you know, it's, it's worth it. You've got to play a good team somewhere along the line. But the thing is, is that Steve Bogan, we used to talk about this, you know, back in the day, <laughs> five, ten years ago. Steve Bogan used to be a big fan of saying, you've got to teach your kids how to win in the non-league. They, they, they've got to experience winning and learn how to win. Chaminade didn't do that. La Mirada didn't do that. Um, La Habra didn't do that, but, but they've, you know, shown that they can bounce yeah. back. It's, it's an interesting thing. Um, We'll see what happens. The one thing about that, uh, with Chaminade, uh, I've already started looking at the divisions, who's going to make it and who's not. Yeah. That game, this week's uh, Servite Santa Margarita game is going to be a playing game for the playoffs. And when uh, Sarah plays Chaminade next week, that's going to be the play-in game for the last two spots. Because everybody else is in, Freddie. Yeah. Everybody yeah. else is in. And so, in Division Two, everybody's in, too. So the last one more thing. The one more Why thing. Then, one more more yeah, let's okay, keep well, it. then I'll save it. Then. Yeah, let's keep, keep it going here. Oh, well, I, well, I've got a good one. One more thing, I, and I think it's something interesting to talk about. We talked about uh, the attendance and school spirit and everything last week. I shared a tweet, this, uh, and, and, and James chimed in this, and you can chime in, too. South Hills in their game against West Covina. I thought this was pretty creative. Towards the end of the game, students to, you know, organized an L and turned on their flashlights right. to show to West Covina, right. L, like you lost, I losers, saw. whatever yeah. you want to call it. James thought that was a little Bush League. I thought it's, you know, taking school spirit that next level. Of, I've grown up, you know, ever since high school, chanting scoreboards. Right. Scoreboard. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I remember being in a high school soccer game. My last one, we were number one in CIF, and then the Corona Del Mar beat us. They get in the bus, driving off our field, chanting na 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 na. I mean, it's just part of, I, I think, that whole experience. And, and these things overrated go on. Over, overrated. Overrated. Yeah. I didn't think it was a, a big deal, James. Okay, and you know, I had a good, and I had a good conversation with Murphy about it too. I, I think it's kind of what what you kind of alluded to and said on Twitter. It's the 2018 version of of na 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 na, hey goodbye. Yeah. So you know, it's it's just it's the tech era, and that's how they do things now. I, I not not a big deal. But as you mentioned on your column, though, that whole week, yeah. these guys are. Fire and throwing fan pep rallies and everything, right. and it was a great week. Now yeah. go to West Covina game this week and see how many fans are there. Okay, and that's that's another thing too. You know, Freddie had talked about man. You know, they talk about dipping attendance, but look at this game. Look at how how great it was. Look at and one of the things that I said like that Friday night, I could show you ten other games where there were thirty students in the in the crowd, and that's the sad thing. There are still some schools, some student sections that really get into it and do it great. And there are others that are just off the radar completely. I, I can say because I was at the, the La Puente Pomona game. Yeah. Maybe 40 people were at the game that night. See, 40. Yeah, that's that's really? Next. For a big game like that? Well, you have to remember, remember too, you know who was. I think the, the Dodgers were playing that night yeah. at home, too. Yeah, you know. You know. So that's what you're sorry, sorry, sorry about that. For. You know, uh, but and the okay. So you ready? you ready for my last one? Yeah. Yes, four, let's four, have it now. Come on now, let's go. Come on now. You know, I saw an article, I retweeted it last week. I believe it was in the Sacramento B. I want to say. Yeah that uh, the league that Folsom is in up north, and yep. Folsom's a powerhouse, you know, up north. They're one of the, probably one of the top teams in the country. Mm -hmm. they got like a Clemson down running back, you know, D1 guy at like QB. Um, it, just D1 guys all over. That's the team that smashed Chaminade down here. Their league, I guess they had their league meeting like last week, and their league, I don't, I don't remember the name of it, um, they kind of ambushed them at the league meeting basically um, asking them to be like kind of voted out of the league because they're too good and the rest of the league just doesn't match up. And not only that, it wasn't just like an idea that was brought forth by you know the ADs and coaches who was ever at the um, the league meeting. It was like they had PowerPoint presentations supposedly. <laughs> they, they had like charts, graphs, everything. No one had told Folsom going in. No one else in the league had told him, hey. Just an FYI, one of the things on the docket today is we're going to talk about voting you out of league. 
So I started thinking, like, down here, you know, in our little area, is there any league where that might happen? Like, there's someone that's just so good in, you know, in football or in any particular sport? I'll tell you one right away. How about the freeway league? Well, yeah, getting La Habra. Get him out of there. I mean, they, every time we talk about La Habra, they're two and four, two yeah. and five. Well, Folsom, we're talking about a state power, right? Yes, oh, a this, national yeah, power. I, I, think, I think it's a, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Um, that you'd be talking, you you know, you could say this about maybe Corona Centennial in their league, in the league that they're in because they dominate that one. Dude, there's no one yeah. in there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. Yeah, that's a good I mean, point there. Oh, that's, that's the only comparison that I would see down here. The Trinity League is the Trinity League. As great as Modern Day and Bosco. Who played this? I was thinking maybe one more thing. Yeah. Um, uh, we're going to leave that one alone. Uh, Modern Day, Bosco. <laughs> I know it's the biggest game in Southern California, maybe sure. California, maybe the country. You have something to say, Mr. CIF? Can Modern Day beat UCLA? No, absolutely. Did you? <laughs> Jeez. Come to it. Huh? Jeez. I, I had asked, I had tweeted about that Jesus. saying, could a team combining Modern Day and IMG no. beat UCLA? No, yeah, I come know. on. But I mean, you know, come would on. they cover 20? They wouldn't beat Mount Sac, okay? They wouldn't beat Mount Sac. <laughs> could Mount Sac I don't know. No. no. I don't know. No. Yeah, we're just trashing on the Bruins Jeez. now. You know. Susan Pacific couldn't beat UCLA. Hey, uh, one more thing. I actually like UCLA plus the points this week against Cal. Whatever that means to you, I think your team yeah. might get its one and only win of the season. If you saw that Cal quarterback, that Brandon I mean, McElwain is his name. Yeah, I, that guy literally couldn't I, throw the ball. I realize, the I realize UCLA is zero and five, but we have a guy asking me if Modern Day can beat UCLA. You know, a few days after they lost by seven points to Washington, number seven in the country. Oh, okay. so no, no, a Modern Day <laughs> St. John Bosco All Star team couldn't do it. A California All Star team couldn't do it. Wow. Sack or APU. Wow. Never going to do hey, it. You know, you have something. And right there's here. one game that UCLA has to worry about this year, and we'll be ready for that one game. No, well, okay. listen, you one have game. something there. Arguably, okay. UCLA's two toughest opponents, Oklahoma and Washington, they covered the spread against. So there's that progress. Are yeah. you taking you taking modern day yeah, in that game with, with Bosco though? I'm taking modern day. I like modern day. The, the yeah. better question is: Does modern day get more fans at their home games than UCLA does at theirs? Yeah. That's Ooh. the better question. UCLA needs the Pac-12 in attendance. So there you go. Ooh. Football attendance? Yes. yes. I'm pretty what? sure they do. Wait. Uh, uh, you, can look that up, uh, you know that might we attendance. we might have to do a fact check on that here and report back yeah, to you on that next week. One of those situations can I do that? And they just outdo some of these thirty thousand seat stadiums, but right. I, they have I did the read somewhere. Stadium. I did read somewhere that they led the Pac-12 in attendance. Maybe no, that. I'll, you know, I'm gonna. Can, can I fact check that, please, if you don't mind? I have the resources to fact check that. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we, well, well that'll be uh, the first thing next on next week's one more thing. Yeah. Uh, I okay. might be wrong. I might be right. All right. Well, you heard it here first. Yeah. Um, Man, Anyways, this is... that's all we've got for this week. Yeah, There's yeah, a lot yeah. of good games around the area. So speaking of dipping attendance figures, get out to one of those games. Of course, the Dodgers play on Friday night. Yeah, 5 o'clock, though, yeah. so you can watch, you know, you're watching the first, you know. But you know how it is, Freddie. You eat a little game. bit, you drink a little bit. Baseball really is one of those eat. games I can't sit there and just watch. No, I, I got to leave, I got to come back. Hey, where's Fred's yeah. meal going to be at for you? We're going to go eat Friday night before the El Monte game. Ooh, I don't know, I think I might eat at El Monte. I like, you know, they usually have a pretty good little they do. spread before the but game. But they got a new press box now. So new press box. I don't know, I haven't been there, I think. For three or four years. How are you going to do that? They used to sit. Don't they, don't they have the carne asada? Yeah, dude. I, was, I remember. I was at the game against San Marino. They, they had the, the grill going. They had the, the whole thing going yeah. and everything yeah. else. Just go to Alfredo's or Alberto's. Uh, pick one. Any, any one in that family of, of Mexican fast food places. I, when you're there, you got to go there. That's what I think. Bring a, bring a cake with you too, so that you know the game. Yeah, that would be perfect. You gotta bring a cake. You gotta bring a cake, you, bring a cake, you know. Present it to what? Yeah. Ask Singizer if they do to present it to Alvaro. Oh what do you want? <laughs> now we someone someone's gonna be needing to video that. Uh, <laughs> now that we have called it the cake game, I wonder if there will be a cake there somewhere. I think yeah. it's a problem. I'll play. Almani wins the game, they come running out with and a cake. And for God's sake, you know, while you're there, get an Omani helmet. I love that helmet. Like, you know who wants it? You know, you know, you know, there's, you know, another school wants to have a helmet on that is, is Lacerna. Uh, They've been bugging me. Grab one at Mirror on, on Friday. Oh, you're, oh, you're going to the game? Oh, yes, nice. That's probably where I'll be. Uh, no, I'll see you out there. You're going to miss um, the Omani Arroyo showdown? Yeah, that's tough, too. But it's a grass field, so. No, it's not. It's turf now. No, no it's not. It's, it's still grass. Oh, it's a new stadium, but not the turf. Yeah, a new press box for you. They yeah. put that, they're going to yeah, dedicate it. That might be it. I could sit up in the press box there. I'm not, I'm not you know, breathing dust. Yeah, you keep stats. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> this is one of those games, I'm going to try to keep stats. So hard to tweet, do stats, and write your game, and keep you track of the Dodgers. You just got to keep stats on two guys, Fred. That's yeah. all you got to do. Yeah. Camacho, Camacho and Booth. Probably. And yeah. See you next week. Yeah, everybody, uh, like I said, get out to a game. It's no excuse. Um, yeah. Watching the Dodgers win is no excuse. So enjoy it, and we'll be back next week.